Um, young people have played a really key role in developing the agenda that we have today, right from the very beginning to now here at this SDG summit. And we want to kind of explore that and take you on a brief trip down memory lane. And to do that, I have with me the wonderful Wilbur from Uganda. Yeah. We've got Derek from Kenya. And we have Luciano from Brazil. So we thought we'd start off by just um, asking Wilbur, how did you first hear about the MDGs? Um, I first heard, actually, when the MDGs were launched, I was only 12 years old. Um, and at that moment, I was actually in my primary seven. Um, so during that time, my imagination was that MDGs was like a study curriculum that I needed to revise to pass my exams. <laughs> so I only got to understand the MDGs seven years later, when I was in my senior six vacation, undergoing a training with restless development as a volunteer peer educator. I tend to have a similar story, but uh, I, I was nine years old when the MDGs were adopted. I first heard of uh, the word, the term MDG when I was 16, and I thought that was a term for the adult. So I was not really aware of what it entails, but I think growing, uh, growing on, I realized that uh, the MDGs has really done a lot of things for the young people. And in, 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 uh, in my own context uh, from Kenya, I think uh, in terms of uh, young people going to school, there has been an increased number of young people accessing uh, school facilities. And again, uh, from the northeastern part, which uh, has been practicing early girl-child marriage, the number has drastically reduced. So I think uh, really the MDGs has been, uh, has been a great uh, doing to the young people. Absolutely, I agree with you. Um, by my own perspective, I believe MDG would have been better. Um, the po policies and programs that came out of the Millennium Development Goals targeted young people as beneficiaries and rather as leaders. Um, I would have loved oh, to see that young people were at the center of the implementation of these MDGs, whereby young people are supported to lead implementation, monitoring, and accountability. And this is where probably they are able to hold their own leaders to account. But this was something I thought that kind of lacked in this MDG process. I will agree with you that it would have been more better or it would be awesome if the young people were included. But you realize uh, when you started by your introduction, you mentioned that you were undergoing a training on peer education. So the peer education was related to sexual reproductive health, I believe so. So I think as young people, we've been uh, leading the process unknowingly, but uh, I would want to reckon the fact that at least we should have been made aware. Brilliant, thank you so much. That's really interesting to hear and actually what's Great is that young people have not only been implementing the MDGs, but they've also played a crucial role in developing the SDGs. And Luciano, I understand you've been involved in that process since Rio plus 20, is that right? Yes, they're right. So I was 22 as well. And I, I, I came to a knowledge that when young persons can lead with purpose, like in a major group of children and youth, we have young persons from all over the world. We have been following process from the UN, like a different kind of process. The Youth Blast has been shown to us that youth or can organize it, can make a nice program, can, I, can make a nice capacity building, so we can influenciate all of this process and we could see reflect in some points of the document our results. So we have more than 2,000 young persons there, uh, 
our hashtag has won the world for the trending topics on Twitter. So from my experience in organizing that event and in preparation for Rio Plus 20, I could see from practice that when we invest in youth participation, meaningful youth participation, the results are amazing. Um, I find that a great process uh, that I would want to record on. Um, towards the end of that, that period, we saw that globally, consultations were being made for young people to get to know their voices and also to young people to give us their understanding of how they want to shape the next global development agenda. So you have, we collected thousands of, thousands of young voices we are collected on the, their priorities and the kind of agenda they want to see. So you have voices of young people calling for cl end to climate change calling for end to poverty, calling for quality education, calling for inclusiveness in decision-making processes, and all these areas to see that young people are at the center of implementation of the Millennium Development Goals and SDGs moving forward. Yes, and, and hearing you, um, I also think about the, the main difference about the SDGs, MDGs, is this process, this open process. It's so rich because we involve people in high-level parts as well. So there was the, the high-level consultation, like in Bali, I, w I was there, you can see Lloyd there, I was also sitting there in the back. So uh, we were there in a high-level consultation with, with people uh, that are in, in decision-making places, and else we're talking directly to them as we are now, and telling what our need or ideas to make this world better. Going forward, I think uh, uh, the intergovernmental negotiations from the high level panel discussions and uh, in Bali and, and, and in London, I think uh, uh, the IGN was also very inclusive and uh, just like it was inclusive in uh, helping develop the 17 goals, we are so grateful that we have the 17 goals. But on the way forward, personally, I would really appreciate if young people would be in more delegations to the UN, young people would be. I would be so happy to see that the young people are being left to lead the goals by themselves and being supported by the, the older generation. 15 years down the line, I would be so happy to see that more young people are the ones sitting down to develop this and not being given the opportunity to contribute. Um, in 2030, I'll be 42 years old. Um, and I want to come back here with some of you. In that moment, I want to celebrate the end to hunger. I want to celebrate end to climate change. I want to celebrate quality education for all. I want to celebrate young people at the center of development, and of course, young people leading development. And finally, that's a moment when we would be celebrating, or we would want to see new and innovative dynamic, dynamics and paradigms of young people getting involved and leading change. Thank you very much. Thank you.